Let's create our first recording in Logic Pro for iPad. The first thing I want to set is the tempo. So if we're going to tap on the tempo, I can just use this rotary interface to change the tempo. The other option is to just tap on the number and type in the tempo that you want. The third option is to tap the tempo that you have in mind. And automatically, Logic will try to guess the tempo that you want. So let's say that for now I want a tempo around 110 bit per minute. If I tap on the meter, I can also change the meter. And this is very flexible. I can set any meter I want. So very, very advanced. Of course, I can also program tempo changes in the global track, but we're going to talk about that later. The next thing to do is to select an instrument that I'm going to play on the selected MIDI track. Now, to select an instrument, the fastest way is to just go to our library, go to the plugin presets, instrument patches, and here I can just choose any built in software instruments or patch that is inside Logic. I can filter them by type of instrument or style. So for example, let's say I want to get a keyboard and specifically I want an electric keyboard. So I'm going to get a classic electric piano. The sound will be automatically loaded and also the icon will be changed accordingly. So now I can close this window and I'm ready to start recording. Since I don't have a MIDI keyboard connected at the moment, I'm going to use the built-in keyboard. And specifically, I'm going to use my chord strips. The chord strips allow me to trigger preset chords by simply tapping on these buttons here. Down here, the darker buttons are for just the bass notes. And the other buttons here allow me to trigger the selected chord at different voicings. So if I tap here, I'm going to get a higher voicing. If I tap here, a lower voicing and so on. So let's start recording something. I'm going to make sure that I have my count off on. By the way, if I want to change the count off option, I simply tap and hold. And I'm going to select a different type of count off. I'm going to select two bars. And I'm going to have the metronome on and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to hit record. And here we go. So now I've recorded those chords inside my first track. And I have my region right here with the chords that I just recorded. If I want to close the keyboard. I simply tap on the keyboard icon there and I'm ready to go. So let's hear what I just did. I'm going to return to zero and press play. By playing the track back, I can see that it would be nice to have the chords a little bit more at tempo with the metronome, right? So that's where we can quantize the track. To quantize a track means to move every MIDI event to the closest rhythmic subdivision that I pick. Usually, the quantization value needs to be set to the smallest rhythmic subdivision that I played. So in this case, whole notes. In order to quantize a region or a track, I'm going to open my info panel. And here under quantize, I can look at all the different quantization options. They're very extensive in Logic Pro for iPad. 
the first thing to set up is my quantization value. So if I tap right here, where at the moment it says off, I can pick my quantization value. As I said, the quantization value should be equal to the smallest rhythmic subdivision that you played. So in this case, I could choose whole notes, but it can also be smaller if I was fairly accurate. So I'm going to choose half note. So by doing so, now all the events have been moved to the closest half note. Let's see it. So now it's perfectly quantized. There are more advanced quantization options, of course. We're going to go through this in a separate video. So now I recorded my first part. Of course, I'm going to close here my info window so I have a little bit more screen real estate. Now, what about if I want to repeat this? Right? So I have my eight bars. First of all, I can trim right, my region right to bar nine. So I'm going to select my trim tool and now I can just drag the end of the region and now I have my perfectly trimmed eight bar region. As I said, if I want to quickly duplicate it, I can just use the duplication tool right here, which means that now if I tap, hold and drag, I'm going to make a perfect copy right away. What about if I want to undo this? Very simple. I can use my undo button right there. And by the way, the undo button also allows me to look at my undo history right here. So again, if I want to duplicate it, I'm going to make sure to have the duplicate option there. And now I just tap, hold and drag, and I'm going to make a copy rather than just move the region. Of course, if I want to zoom in and out, I'm going to use the pinch gesture. And so I can see now my full 16 bars. Let's add a second track now. So first of all, I'm going to go right here and add a new track. I'm going to select MIDI. This is my second track right here. I'm going to go to my presets. I'm going to select instrument patches. And let's say that I want to put a bass like a synth bass. So I'm going to select synth bass and I can preview some of the patches here by simply pressing the play button here. Let's say that I like the boxy synth. If I want to load it into the track, I can just tap this button here. That means that when I select it, automatically it's going to go to the track. If this button is not on and I want to load a patch, I can just drag that instrument into the track. Very simple. So now I can close my patch drawer. I'm going to bring up my keyboard again and I'm going to make sure that I have selected the current track that on which I want to record on. That means that this, this record enable right here. Now if I press a key, if I want to change octave, I can use the two arrows here that brings up the octaves. The interface of the keyboard also allows me to customize my input method. If I tap on scale, I can activate the keyboard to play only certain note of a certain scale. So in this case, C major only. I can choose very different scales if I want. So this simplifies a little bit the playing if you are not very comfortable playing full keyboard. Okay, now I'm ready to record. I'm going to make sure that I'm at the beginning of the sequence. I'm going to hit record. And here we 
go. I have my synth bass track done. I'm going to close my keyboard. Now I'm going to quantize the part. So to quantize, remember, you're going to select the region, bring up the info panel, select quantize, and again I'm going to choose my half note, and now the part is quantized. If I want to change the color of a track or a region, I can do it right from my info panel here. First of all, you need to make sure what you're looking at. See right here, I'm looking at the region now. If I tap there, I can look at the information of the track. So if I look at the information of the track, now I'm going to tap on general, color, select a different color, and now the color of the track has changed as well as the color of the region. I can also change my icon. So I have a good, good option here. This is a synth base, so I'm going to choose a synth icon. And that allows me to identify the track a little bit more easily. I can close the general information now and close this. Now if I want to repeat this, again, very easy. I can just, with my duplicate tool on, I can just tap and drag and I have my perfect duplicate right there. If I want to loop a certain region, I can also do it. First of all, if I want to select two objects simultaneously, I'm going to use my selector tool right here. This allows me to keep adding to the current selection, so I selected two regions, or it also allows me to tap and drag across multiple regions, so now they're both selected. So I could duplicate them both, or if I go back to my info window, I can go to my general and I select loop. By selecting loop, now those two regions have been looped until the end of my project. So it's a quick way to loop your regions. I'm going to close my info window and now again I have a perfectly duplicated part. Now what about if I want to transpose these two regions? It's very simple. I can do it right from the track list view. Again I'm going to open my info panel and as you can see one of the options is to transpose the selected region. So I can just tap there and drag my finger left and right to transpose up or down. To select the transposition amount I can double tap on the field and just type the number of half steps that I want the region to be transposed. So I'm going to select two, tap done, and so now when I play it back I have my two regions transposed. So very simple. So again, you can do a lot from the info window for the regions that I have selected.